Hello everyone, I'm Tracy and I'm part of the Tiny Pandora design team and today I would like to show you how I am going to make this. And this is just a little jar that I've covered with some translucent clay and the silk screen that I got from tinypandora.com and also out of the same silk screen how you can also make a pair of earrings. So let's have some fun. See you soon. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to need. Firstly, you're going to need a little jar of some sort. It doesn't have to be a jar, but I'm going to call this earrings in a jar tutorial. So um, this is just a little one that I picked up, I think when I had a cream tea or something somewhere, I can't really remember. And all I did was I've painted the lid in black acrylic and then just gave it a quick coat of varnish. Nothing too special on the lid. So you do want the jar. You are also going to want your blades for cutting your clay. You're also going to need a little tool that you can make a hole. Now you can do this in the earrings either prior to baking or after baking. I did mine after baking and after I applied some Magic Gloss on there. So onto that you are going to need some Lisa Palveca uh, Magic Gloss and also some Pandora, Tiny Pandora Deep Shine. Um, both of these you can get from tinypandora.com. You're also going to want a brush of some sort to apply your Deep Shine. I've also got this little acrylic roller which comes in the set of cane benders from tinypandora.com and this is fantastic for being able to put the clay onto the glass and being able to smooth it down but you can use anything you might have a, like a knitting needle or something like that. You are also going to want some acrylic paint and this here I've got black but that's really dependent on what colour you want to use. You obviously are going to need a silk screen and this one works absolutely perfectly because like I say out of this silk screen which you can get from tinypandora.com um, I obviously can cover the jar and make a pair of earrings so I think that's pretty good. You're going to need something to scrape your clay, uh, your um, acrylic paint through your silk screen with and as you can see I'm, this one's well used but it's a good one and I've also got this which comes from the Easy Bangles kit and I'll explain that a bit later on. And you're also going to need a roller but if you're going to get a block of clay and you are going to need a good two ounces of clay for this and the reason I say that is because you need to be able to roll it out long enough for it to be on the number that I want it to be on or that I'm suggesting you put it on to go around the, the glass jar. So if your clay is fairly soft, this will be fine just to use to start with and then you can put it through a pasta machine. But if it's like anything like I've had just recently, unfortunately, it seems to be some of the clays do tend to be a bit um, crumbly, for want of a better word. And this is the big boss. And believe you me, this is masterful. It absolutely does the job. So um, brilliant if you just need to flatten down that initial piece of clay or that block of clay enough to be able to put it through your pasta machine and it really helps to start conditioning it too so I can highly recommend this again you can get these from tinypandora.com okay so I think that's just about all the tools you're going to need to start with if I've forgotten anything oh yes and obviously we're talking about uv resin so you're going to need a uv lamp mine is a 36 watt um, you can get the lesser watts, but 36 watts are pretty good for this because it does does cure it sort of a lot quicker. Again, I believe you can get those from tinypandora.com too. OK, let's make a start. So first of all, we are going to need our clay because we obviously want to apply our silk screen. And I've prepared some here and this I have done out on a down to a number three. It's really up to you. I found the number three was quite a nice thickness. Um, it seems to sort of sit quite nicely on the clay without being too thick. A number two can be a bit temp. A number four, sorry, could be a little bit temperamental. Um, and you'll find that with acrylic, that when you when you put it on, you do need to be a little bit careful with it. So I found that the number three works the best. So we'll go with that. So I've rolled this through. I've conditioned it, and I've conditioned it really well. Um, helps to take some of those little funny little white bits you sometimes get almost like little air bubbles they look like it's taken quite a lot of that out so I'm quite pleased with this so the next thing to do is to apply the silk screen and you will need a bowl or a something big enough to take this afterwards in some water 
warm water preferably with some dish soap in would really help so I'm just going to lay this on the top and what I might do is I'm actually going to take a little bit of this off so I don't get hopefully any paint on any other part of the clay other than the silk screen itself so that way I'm not affecting the clay at all so I'm just going to take this I don't want it to go right to the edge that pattern because I do want a little bit of an edge if you notice there I've got a little bit of an edge so I want that to still be apparent so I know I can take this down to sort of around about here so I'm just going to take that off it wasn't particularly straight but I think we can live with it and then I'm going to lay this back down and like I say I want to try and have a little bit of an edge either side so it does mean but if I can cover the whole thing there we go and as you can see I really quite like this silk screen so uh, let's bring this down a bit more make sure we're in shot okay so just make sure that it is nicely adhered and then all I'm going to do is add a bit of the acrylic paint I'm going to have to turn this up a little bit this way hope you can see that okay so I'm just going to run a little bit of acrylic paint and I do excuse my arm just at the top here it doesn't need to be very much because we can scrape it down I'll just get my scraper and then we're just going to work this down and you just want to make sure you're going to get it into all the little places on the silk screen and make sure you can get that right fully in there and try and I always try and go over it at least once or twice that way I can take off any excess piece of paper towel to clean that and then you want to remove your screen as gently as possible just slowly bring it back and then you'll see the wonderful pattern emerge and this this silk screen is just absolutely gorgeous and I love this long one so I'm putting that straight into my water so that way I know it can sit there and I'm not gonna cause any issues with it and it's not going to ruin it while I'm carrying on doing this tutorial while I just find something that I can actually push it down into the water so it's definitely submerged but that silk screen I mean that pattern is just lovely and can you see that you could if you wanted to um, you know you can paint it if you wanted to once it was dry you could maybe do some oils on it you could do some pastels on it if you wanted to you could put pastels on the actual um clay first of all and then silk screen over the top i just wanted to have it just like that so um obviously now you're going to need to let that dry and it will be a case of trimming up the edges so rather than have you waiting around or me pausing videos i've actually made another one and so here's the one that's nice and dry and as you can see i've got a nice little edge just on this side and what I want to do is replicate that onto this side and this is where this wonderful tool from the Easy Bangles kit comes in because I find it just gives me that length without being too heavy handed with it and I just take it just in slightly to the edge there make sure I try and get it as even as possible and just hold it, it doesn't need to actually sit down on the clay as such and then I just run my blade from top to bottom and that way I'm just going to get that nice edge so these tools are so so useful and I do like it when tools can be used for other things I always think that's um great value for money so I'm just going to trim up these edges and I'm going to take it in just inside the the little line there on that first bit just so as it sort of matches up a little bit when I start to put it on the on the jar and this is where I'm going to use my bigger blade just to release this because it has been sat here and I don't want to affect it at all I will take a little bit more off of this end I think so as I don't have to do it 
from her. That didn't really mean anything because I'm going to be putting it on the jar and it's, it's a little bit long anyway, so that's how I can get the earrings out. So I'm just going to remove that tile. And then I'm just going to get my... All I do with this is I'm just going to centre it as best I can on the jar and it just roll it round. Don't worry about the edges at the moment, just roll it round until you meet the other side and just keep bringing it round. Try and keep it as level as you can and you'll see how level it is when you get round to this part. And then all I do there is I just tap it in just so as I can make a line on that side. And then just turn this and then you'll, you might not be able to see it, but there's a line just here. So I'm just going to take that off. And then that will be used for our little earrings. And then this will just come round. I'm just going to ease it into place and it really is easing it into place. It's a little bit fiddly, but um, you just want to sort of join it up as gently as you can. And then you'll just slowly bring it together. And it is just about sort of rolling your fingers or rolling your thumb towards it. And you don't want to be too heavy handed because acrylic paint can peel up. It's like a it goes like a plastic. It's quite bizarre, but um, well, it is acrylic. So uh, there we go. And then all I do then, obviously having the inside helps to be able to stick my fingers in there. So as I can hold it, and it's a little bit out there, but I'm not going to worry too much. Don't quite know why that's gone like that. But anyway, so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slowly ease this down. And it, you think to yourself, it's never going to work because there's going to be too much clay. But it, it does. It's surprising. Um, it just You just have to sort of manipulate it. And uh, it's just about being gentle and not pushing it too hard so as it could crease. You get to this point, you think, I'm never going to get this to work. But it does. It will. Believe me. So we get round to here and it just seems to, it's, it's quite odd, it just seems to just work. So you're just slowly bringing that down and you want to make sure it's got a good addition on the bottom there and just slowly because uh, that's going to annoy me like I don't know what. So I think I'll just get my little exacto knife. And take that edge off just because it would bug me so there we go so all we're doing is just making sure that that edge is nice and rounded and by using sort of this part of your thumb you can't really do much damage so, but obviously I would say that the, you really do need to make sure that your silk screen is dry. Um, so make sure the paint's dry. And then we're just going to tip it up this way and we're going to do exactly the same thing. And this is just about easing it into place. We're not really forcing it. We're just manipulating the clay to go where we want it to go. Um, and it does feel as though you think to yourself, this is never going to work. It's never going to fit in there, but it will. Um, it's amazing what this stuff is capable of doing. But uh, it's just slowly, slowly working its way round just to make sure we get it nice and into the edge. And I must admit, when I first done it, I thought, this, oh, crikey, this is not going to work. What have I done? I've wasted some clay. Not that I would ever waste clay. Um, but it just seems to want to sit in there. So it's just about being just gentle rather than too heavy handed. Just be very gentle and it will just slowly work its way down. And I just think that just fits that absolutely lovely. So, I mean, if you can get a jar that you can, you know, maybe fit the thing, the silk screen, as close as possible but it doesn't have to because you can always make 
you know, you could always double it up maybe if it was a bigger jar. Um, I don't know if that's going to bug me, so I'll just take that little slither off there. And then this little tool just make it so good and I do find that I can just run this over the join and it's surprising actually because when I finished the last one I actually thought to myself well when I finished when I came to doing the deep shine I thought okay I'll start where I've joined it and <laughs> I actually had a bit of a job to work out where I joined it for a little bit so it really is surprising you don't really notice it um, but another reason I do this is just enables me to make sure there isn't any pesky air bubbles. But there's a little tip I can give you on that. So I'm just really making sure this is definitely all nicely, neatly down. And if you can, I don't know if you can see in there, but if you can look and see inside, you can actually see where the clay may not have quite adhered to the glass. And that's another good way. You can then just work it so as you can alleviate any air bubbles that way. Just very gently, because like I say, this acrylic, it will peel off if you're not careful. But that all looks quite good in there to me. And it is just about making sure this edge is nice and tight. And I haven't put anything on the glass first, as you see. You don't need to. It's not going to come off. Um, obviously, if I decided to peel it off. I could, but you don't need to put any kind of adhesive because of, purely because of its shape as much as anything else. Um, I haven't even when I've done sort of just square ones, I don't bother. Um, the only time I really do anything where I put adhesion on is if I'm using a cardboard box. But that's more for um, uh, just because I'm just, it just worries me that it could peel off a little bit easier on the cardboard. but. I've never had it happen so so there we go so that's that done so it really doesn't take very long um and it is such a pretty and you can even at this stage if you want to you know paint it that's entirely up to you um you could do it afterwards with some lovely acrylic paints and then just varnish it or deep shine it's really up to you i left mine blank because i just thought they looked very pretty as they were um so that now needs to be baked but first of all and I did forget to mention little earring cutters that I use. And these ones came from Ojoy Creations. Uh, they are the number one stacking earring cutters. Don't know if she's still got these in her store, but she's got plenty of others that you can choose from. And I believe I went for that one. Let me just double check. Yes. So I didn't use the smallest. I used the middle size one. So all I'm going to do is get myself a little white tile that way. I can actually leave them on the tile and I probably will just want to make sure that's down right so it's probably a bit risky doing this but I just want to make sure I get it nice and flat to that and then I'm just going to cut out two of these I'm just going to use my acrylic this you can also get from Tiny Pandora. You can do swirly beads with this. So I really like the fact that actually there is very minimal waste. Um, you can see how that little bit of acrylic paint's pulled up there. Don't worry. I'll just take this off around the edge. And I'm going to leave those there like that you can tidy them up if you want to and I always just like to just make sure the edge is as clean as possible but you can easily get that off when you've baked them so they are ready to go in the oven along with this so they will both go in and I will put them in for about 40 minutes because there is not an awful lot of clay um, and 40 minutes seems long enough obviously at the recommended whatever clay you use this is Primo. Um, so yeah, I'll put those in and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so they're all nicely baked. And there's just a little tip here I'm going to show you. Because these are really quite sort of thin and fragile, 
well, I say fragile, I mean, they're not that fragile, but just small and not so easy to use. All I've done on the back here is put a little bit of tape and it just enables me just to stick those down so they're going to stay in one place. Then you want the lovely piece of Pavelka. And I always seem to get this wrong when I say this. How? Oh, it's Pavelka. Lisa Pavelka. I must try and remember that. I was for some reason say Pavelka, so you do have to excuse me. So I'm going to do the lovely trick that Teresa Salgado spoke about. Let's just make sure I can get that so it hasn't got hopefully chimney bubbles. And we are just going to run a really, really thin line because we don't want this to be too big. Just around the edge. Just enable us to put this underneath the lamp in a minute and then we can do the brush on while this is cooking on the little jar. So this little technique is absolutely brilliant. It just saves that pulling back from that edge and it just enables you to get a much more even even looking piece so quite happy with that I normally have to do a bit of fettling because that's just me so I'll get my lovely little tool here and just make sure that I am on the edge as much as I want to be I'm going to bring it in just a little bit because I don't want it to be too tall or too raised on those edges so I just want to make sure just having that little bit of sticky tape really does help. It just enables you to be able to do this without moving around. Okay, so let's just get a cloth, wipe that off, and then I'm just going to get my little um, torch just to make sure there isn't any bubbles. I don't think there is actually, just in case. Okay, so that I'm going to put straight underneath the light and uh, that can just sit there while I do the brush on for this. Now, some people aren't too sure about the deep shine. It does take a little bit of getting used to. It's not something that you want to, but don't be frightened of it. It's, you know, it's there's just a technique involved, I would say. You just need to be, don't, put too much on um, you really really don't need very much as you can see but you just don't need to put too much on and uh, it's just about moving the brush on there as opposed to really sort of brushing it I suppose it's a bit hard to explain but um, I'm just going to make sure that all parts of my brush has got some on I'm just going to take the excess off and then I'm just going to start now. I'm going to see if I can find the actual join on this one. So as I can start, there we go. There it is. So it's just about laying it on and using the brush very, very tentatively. You're really not really brushing it as such. You're, you're moving the deep shine, I suppose you could say. I mean, it's hard until you actually start doing it yourself. What I would say is if you're really not sure, practice. Get yourself some scrap clay, bake a few pieces, bake some onto maybe, you know, a shape, a form, something like this, so it's got an oval shape to it, and then practice. Because practice really does make perfect. And I'm not saying I'm perfect every time, I'm not. Sometimes even I stuff up when I'm using it and I've been using this for quite a while now but you just get used to it and when you put the first coat on sometimes you may find it feels a bit rough just give it a sand and then you can apply another coat it you know um, don't be put off because this is a really really good resin um, and it's so I mean it's to be able to do this with resin is absolutely fantastic i think and yes you can achieve just as a lovely gloss with with you know a varnish i just love the way this really does shine um 
and if you've got colour on here as well, can you imagine the pop you would get when you just put it on here? And like I say, I love doing these little jars. Um, I just think there's, they could be used for so many things. Give them as little gifts. You know, have a little earring in there, or a little bracelet, anything really. And it's just cute, you know, people can use them for whatever they want afterwards. Crikey, I've got one sat next to me, bed with medication in it, so there you go. I just think they're very, um, they're just made for decorating. And it's just about gently, gently working your way around and you'll see, and it's always pays to do this in the light if you can, preferably not when there's blazing sunshine coming through the window because that doesn't help, because obviously it's UV. Um, but just keep moving it around and checking little areas you get little areas where it looks as if it's pulled back and that's probably just where my fingers have touched the paint and it's a little bit of grease on there but it's just about working it you just got to keep working it um, just making sure that you just gently gently because you don't want to pull it too much because like I say this acrylic paint it can peel so you do need to be a bit gentle but just work yourself around and we'll just keep going till we get to the end and then this will go under the lamp too And there we go. So now I'm just going to put that straight underneath the UV lamp and make sure that I give that a good at least five minutes. And what I did do with the other one is I actually picked it up and turned it over so as it got even, because obviously with the bevel, just so as it gets an even temperature. But don't worry if it doesn't come out perfect, you can sand it down and just put another coat on. So there we go. While that's underneath there, I'm just going to move that out of the light and always put your brush away. Just wrap it up in some tin foil, put it to bed as such. Just take that out of the light. And then these are nice and rock hard. So I'm just going to add the last little bit of the Lisa Pavelka. Got it right. And I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle. And there will be some bubbles with this because it didn't stand up very well when I did it. And I'm just going to work that with my little tool. I'm just going to take that over the edges and having those little, having them stuck down really does help actually. I just want to work it out. Just going to put a little bit more just so as I can get it even. Just drop a little bit more in the middle. Don't want to go too mad otherwise it will, it will run over the edge. That's not too much of a problem so you can easily wipe it up. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to get my little torch, just make sure there's no little air bubbles. It's always handy to have it on this sort of thing, and then you can actually see if you need to uh, 
do any more fettling as I call it, because I'm terrible for that. I think they'll be okay. I don't actually know what happened to my little tool. I seem to have lost that. So I'm going to put those back under the UV lamp and I will keep my uh, little jar under there for a little bit longer too and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so that's my jar all done and actually that's only had one coat and I'm really quite happy with that. So we're going to just put that one to one side and then I'm just going to show you how I very quickly put these earrings together and they really weren't that hard to do. Various little tools I've got here. This one you can see is absolutely ancient. I don't even know what it's called, but a flathead. Both of them are flat-headed. This is a little pair of cutters. Probably won't need them because I think I've pre-cut my little bits of wire. Um, pointy tool, I call it. Pointy flathead. I have no idea what they're called, so you have to excuse me there. And my little turners here will make jump ring type things out of it. So I just need those tools. And all I'm going to do first of all is just drill my holes. And literally just straight into the top here. And you always know as well when you're doing something like this, if your clay is baked well, then one, it's not going to break and two you get those lovely coils of clay so it shows it's been baked correctly just do this one it's always a little bit tentative when you do it because you never quite know how close you are to the edge sometimes a bit worrying i normally just pick it up go. I've done that. Move this out of the way and I'm just going to piece these together. And I've just chosen because obviously this one I've done and I put like a slightly bluey tinged one to it. Well, I don't really want to the same so um, I'm going to do a purpley one. But all I do first is I need to just put the little jump rings on first. So I'll just show you one. You don't need to sit and watch two. Just open this up. I might need to open it a bit wider than that. Just to get it on there. Oh, come on. I just want this pushed through like so. Not a lot of room I've left there for that one, which is a bit silly, but never mind. I'm sure we can work with it. And then all I'm going to do here is just attach that to there. I will tighten that up now, so as I know, it's going to close. There we go. And then I just put the black one on. And the purple. I just think it just lends itself to being a really pretty little earring. Um, just going to turn this one over on this edge too. And then this will go into one of these little jump rings. I think that's what I did. Can I do that? Just double check on this one. Yes, I did. Little jump ring in there. And then that can be closed up too. It's always difficult trying to do this when you're not right in front of you. And then all that needs to do, I would never get this the right way round, so I always work it first of all. Nope. <laughs> I knew that would happen. So then I have to work out what I'm doing. There we go. Hopefully that will work. And when it sits on the earring, there you go. That's better. Oops. And then, oh, typical. So that can just go actually straight on there. I didn't know whether that was open enough. Oh. 
the wrong way around again. There we go. It's fine. No, it's not. That's the right way. So I'm just going to close that one up. And then I'll make the second pair up, or the second one up. And then you can see the whole lot together. So there you go, my earrings in a jar. And uh, really, really lovely to be able to just make something from one silk screen like that and get two items out of it. I think it's great. So it's just decorated a lovely little jar. And like I say, you can decorate it however you wish. You can paint this decorate these you know use some mica powders or some inks whatever you want to do but I just like the black and white I thought it really just well black and translucent translucent I just thought it looked really really quite cool so um have some fun and if there's any questions please ask and uh enjoy <laughs>